Today, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, this is in the hush money case, uh, asked for a gag order in the case. Uh, this is Donald Trump's accused of uh, falsifying business records to cover up the payments to Stormy Daniels. The trial set to begin March 25th. What would that gag order cover potentially? So it sounds like what the DA has proposed here is really a fairly narrow gag order that actually almost exactly mirrors the federal gag order. What this would do if adopted by the judge is prevent Donald Trump from making statements that could interfere with or influence the jurors, the witnesses, the courtroom staff, and the prosecutor staff other than the DA himself. I actually think, I'm not a fan of gag orders. I never used to seek them when I was a prosecutor, but I think in this case, it's appropriately narrow. It still allows Donald Trump to publicly criticize the case against him. He can say, this is a bogus case. He can say, I'm not guilty. He can even say the DA has bad motives here. So I think what the gag order sets aside is narrow and fair. Trump's team is uh, also asking that Trump's former fixer, Michael Cohen, who facilitated those payments to Stormy Daniels on behalf of Trump, be barred from testifying. Can they do that? Can the Trump team bar Michael Cohen from testifying? No, that is a ridiculous request. They have to know that if you have a witness who you think is impeachable, has lied or will lie, the answer is he gets to take the stand if one party chooses to call him, and then the other party gets to cross-examine him vigorously. And then it is up to the jury to decide whether they believe or disbelieve that witness. There is no such thing as a judge saying, I don't believe this witness. I think he's going to lie. Therefore, he's off the stand. The DA is going to call Michael Cohen. They will assume all the risk that comes with that but it's up to the jury, not a judge. All right, Ellie Honig, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Let's go to the 2024 lead. Let's cue the music. Yes, the race for 2024 has moved to the critical battleground state of Michigan. This is the first battleground state primary or caucus. Let's bring in CNN's Eva McKen. She's in Grand Rapids following the Haley campaign. Kristen Holmes, of course, covers the Trump campaign for us. Kristen, Trump is well on his way to the Republican nomination, of course, but he has been unable to win over a substantial block of Republican voters. It's a minority, but it's still a big chunk. A huge chunk. I mean, Donald Trump on Saturday night said that the Republican Party had never been so united, but our exit polls told a different story. In South Carolina, and the one I want to point to in particular, showed that 31 percent of the South Carolina voters would be unhappy if Donald Trump was the nominee. That is a huge block there. So the question for his team is, how do you fix that? Is that possible going into a general election, which we believe he will be the nominee up against Joe Biden? Now, part of that is that they believe overall that some of these conservatives and in conservative leaning independents will start going to Donald Trump if the option is just Donald Trump or Joe Biden. But that's not everybody. The other part of this is what we saw them do back in Iowa. This is very strategic. What they are going to do in several of these states is try to build out the data that they have from the last several years to expand the MAGA electorate. That means focusing on people who are conservative, right-leaning, who maybe don't know that much about Donald Trump, who have supported him in the past, have donated in the past, but never voted for him. That's going to be part of their strategy there. We also know they really want to turn to that general election because of this. They know they need to build out their infrastructure, particularly in those critical ground state, uh, battleground states, and that's what they want to turn their attention to. So Eva McCann in South Carolina Saturday, the split was 60 percent Trump, 40 percent Haley, roughly. This is how Haley tried to spin a 20 point deficit in her home state. Take a listen. I'm going to count it. I know 40% is not 50%. But I also know 40% is not some tiny group. How is the Haley campaign trying to set expectations for Michigan, the Republican part primary and the results tomorrow night? Well, Jake, by not setting expectations at all, in fact, they are raising the bar for former President Donald Trump. She told us today that right now she is raising every red flag possible. And she argues that Trump in all of these early contests is not winning by a mandate, that he's not getting above 90 percent. And what the last few weeks have actually illustrated is that he is going to have a lot of problems in a general election with independent and moderate voters. And Eva, uh, the Koch brothers have announced they're going to stop trying to support Haley uh, in her presidential quest. Given that news, how much longer can she have on the campaign trail? Uh, you know, you need money to run for president. She says she's going to stay in until Super Tuesday, which is, uh, I think, a week from tomorrow. Might that be her last stand? 
Well, it's unclear at this stage, Jake. Listen, she's got 10 fundraisers coming up. And her team says after South Carolina that they actually raised a million dollars. And a lot of that money came from people donating under $200. But it's not clear what upcoming state she can actually win. I put that question to her. Listen to what she told me. We have 21 states and territories that are getting ready to happen. Why don't we wait and see what happens? We don't have to have a crystal ball and say this is going to happen or that's going to happen. We don't live in Russia. We don't anoint kings. We have elections. Let people vote. But can you name a single state you can win? I can name that 70% of Americans don't want Donald Trump or Joe Biden. Now, for her part, Haley already on to Minnesota this evening, where she is continuing to make her case to voters. And when I was speaking to uh, voters here today uh, in Michigan, Jake, they tell me that, that she's glad that she's still in this contest, that they don't believe that she should be bullied out. And they are hoping for some sort of miracle, for something maybe with uh, Trump's legal cases to happen, <coughs> for her to ultimately become uh, viable uh, once and for all.